Welcome everyone, glad to have you with us. My name is Henrik and this is Red Ice Radio, the program where we cover a lot of different topics and subjects. I hope you take the opportunity to also tune into some of the other programs that we have available for you on the website redicecreations.com. Our archives go back to 2006. Cliff High, along with his associate George Err, developed the WebBot or the WebBot project in the late 1990s. This is an internet bot software program or a web spider that uh, originally was designed to predict stock market trends. However, it was eventually developed into something different and now it's claimed to be able to predict future events by tracking keywords on the web. In 2009, when Cliff last was with us, we covered how the webbot worked in great detail, how the technology works, a few small details about the algorithms, what sources they use, etc. A very interesting program, I think, and this is still in our archives if you want to go back and listen. Today, however, in the first hour, we are going to get Cliff's take on something completely different. We are going to discuss the story of mass arrests. If you have been following this, you'll know that author and speaker David Wilcock have been talking with a whistleblower, an uh, alleged insider by the name of Drake, about the US military and the top military brass in the Pentagon and their secret plans to arrest people in high places, corrupt politicians, bankers, etc. Basically, all those who have been subjecting people to financial tyranny. Connected to this story is also Benjamin Fulford, a former with Forbes magazine who have been reporting and writing from Japan about the Yakuza and the White Dragon Society and their supposed opposition to the Western royal families and the Illuminati. Tied into this is also material about the severity of Fukushima being downplayed. And we are going to get Cliff's take on all of this and much more. Before we begin here, I just want to mention a few things so that uh, you know what's going on here. The following story that we are going to begin talking about here today is something that I've been um, getting quite a bit of email about lately. People want to hear more about it. They are uh, excited and curious and they want us to uh, cover it here on the website. And that is definitely understandable. There are some pretty big claims being um, tossed around here, if I can put it that way. And if true, these uh, claims needs to be um, questioned. Uh, we need to, to raise some, uh, some issues and some points around these claims in order to try to understand them better, I guess that's what I'm saying. But I want to be clear in the beginning that we have now tried several times to get David Wilcock back on the program to give, give us his take on things. We've, we've tried at four different times uh, with one of his contact people or uh, maybe just uh, the one contact person. I'm uncertain about that, but sure. I mean, that's fine. He's busy. We're busy. It doesn't always work out to uh, connect and get together and uh, and do a show about it. So um, although we want to, you know, have him on here first to talk about it, it, it hasn't panned out this way. We've also tried to contact Benjamin Fulford many times now without any success so far uh, to also get his take on things, uh, you know, to give him an opportunity if he's interested in doing so in sharing uh, his story with our audience here. So we do want to cover it and we do want to talk about it. So today we are going to do that, but we are going to cover it from a different perspective, a different point of view, uh, one that is more critical of the claims made both by Benjamin Fulford, uh, David Wilcock and Drake, the so-called whistleblower. Uh, I wish we could have done this chronologically, if you will, start from the beginning and up, but it didn't work out this way this time. So anyway, we have Cliff High with us on the line uh, to talk about this and uh, to give us his point of view on this very interesting and important and, and somewhat complicated story. So again, I just want to make it clear that this is not intended as an attack on any of these people personally. Uh, we've given them plenty of opportunities to come on the program. Uh, if they were willing to do so, to discuss it. And in fact, they're still invited uh, if they want to come on to to uh, to talk about it, if they so please. So uh, it's an important story and uh, it's okay to look critically at it as well. This needs to be done. Uh, this is simply about questioning the material being presented uh, and the ideas or rather the approach, I guess, as well. We'll get into detail about this. But um, And I saw this, by the way, on Cliff High's website as well 
halfpasthuman.com that uh, he posted kind of a similar little disclaimer there clarifying that this is not an ad hominem attack per se this is about questioning the material uh, that we have been presented with so with that welcome back to red eyes radio cliff hi it's good to talk to you again thank you very much very good indeed yes thank you thank you uh there's been a lot of unfolding and and a lot of buzz around this story um and and we do want to get your take on it and and i guess in the beginning here you could lay out as much groundwork as as you feel uh, is necessary to be able to explain it for for some people that the, the story is long and it's drawn out it's been unfolding over a couple of months now there are some uh, oh, much longer than that oh, uh, it actually it? goes back uh several years now with benjamin fulford's um um i would say creeping development of the story uh beginning with his initial attacks on the powers that be uh if i can start right in here what sure. i'll do is i'll jump back then and I first became aware of this because I'm a martial artist, and I, I, and as part of my work with Half Past Human, uh, on a personal level, I have flags in my spiders that bring me new and interesting stories about martial arts, especially because I'm looking for uh, particular developments in that realm. I had, I had spiders specifically looking for uh, new language combinations relative to the martial arts, and they brought me this interesting thing about this guy claiming that uh, there were... Oh, 10 million dojos around the planet with 100 million, um, you know, fierce martial artists ready to go in out and stomp the shit out of the powers that be. And I thought, okay, fine. Uh, I'm a martial artist. I've been in the martial artist from judo at age 11 all the way through various forms of karate, uh, both Japanese and uh, Korean, all the way up into Aikido. And I've been doing this pretty consistently. I'm 58 years old. You do the math. It's been a long time. No dojo I've ever been in would any of the people I have been involved with in that dojo stir themselves to attack anybody on the orders of any of the powers that be in Japan that Benjamin Fulford were claiming were on his side and were going to do this. It's a very complicated story, but but you can look at it in, in two different levels. You can drill in on all the details, which are spun out of the mind of Benjamin Fulford, amplified by the uh, inaccurate conclusions and, un- and accepting mind, uncritical mind of um, uh, David Wilcock, as well as the now um, pumped in information from my opinion, powers that be via Drake, because they've discovered in their terminology that Fulford and Wilcock are useful idiots and are good mouthpieces for information that they want to have out there with a per- certain level of emotional histrionics involved. You have to understand that Benjamin Fulford has a couple of claims to fame, uh, which he's used the claim to fame to attempt to uh, claim um, expert status as a result of that fame. Now, uh, I'm, I'm not a real fan of experts. I have no degrees myself, and I don't trust anybody who does because of uh, a whole lot of reasons. We needn't go there. But uh, Benjamin Fulford is saying that because he used to work for Forbes magazine, he is an economics expert. Right. I would tend, I would tend to disagree. I've been in Forbes magazine. If you want to check, you can find my picture in one of their issues in the late '90s relative to my software called Vortex and the company, um, uh, which was a precursor to Half Past Human that I was running. And they they put me in Forbes magazine. As a result of being in Forbes magazine, I had to investigate it. Bear in mind, I'm not a financial or or um, money aficionado. I, I came into all of this kind of stuff through the software and science world and sort of stumbled into um, this component of reality. And so uh, Forbes magazine calls me up. They say, hey, we want to put you in there. And I think, oh, Forbes, yeah, that's right. I've got this image in my mind of Forbes magazine equaling something like an American version of The Economist. Mm -hmm. And and that could be no further from the truth. I mean, it it is the opposite end of The Economist. It's the people version, uh, people magazine version of the economics world. All they do is take your picture, pump you up, pimp you out, and slap you in there with a few hundred other whores uh, for all of the other uh, Wall Street guys to try and come and feast on you. <laughs> and that's the, the whole point of Forbes magazine. All they do is collect information. They are not an intelligence outfit. They are an information collector for other people to come on in and, and eat up. Quite literally, they're part of the predatory capitalism uh, thing. But uh, So Ben Fulford, all he had to do was to be a personality spotter, not in any way an economics genius. So it's not surprising that the uh, scheme or idea that he's presenting in my mind is grossly inaccurate in its view of reality. 
because he is not an economics genius, in my opinion, and the uh, information he's presenting that there's this whole new, I'm going to encapsulate it in a nutshell and we right. go into the That's details. Right, good, good to do that, I think. Yeah, the, his idea is that there's a, the Yakuza, the Japanese um, uh, crime syndicates that are honest criminals, honorable men who are criminals and don't make any bones about it, are going to get together all these 10 million uh, dojos and force the powers that be to accede to being arrested in their tens of thousands, and their whole money scheme is going to be replaced by this giant gold-backed money scheme uh, run by the Yakuza and uh, parties that are unnamed but go by the name of the collective name of the Dragon Family. And is, that is this the, going... the White uh, Dragon Society, basically? Correct, correct, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, many, many names in this thing. Um, and, and again, I'm encapsulating and boiling it down to a thick syrupy mass, and we yep. get into the details later because the, my point is the details are actually Im, uh, immaterial. They do not matter because the whole thing is fictional. Um, but my point on this is that his idea is that one money scheme, the current uh, global petrodollar, uh, euro, uh, transnational, forex managed uh, uh, scheme will be replaced by another one in which money will rain down upon the masses of the people and the powers that be will, will disappear overnight, that kind of a deal. So it's, a, it's in my mind, it is yet again another external savior myth. Uh, which is what they always hook us humans with. doesn't matter if it's religion, science, philosophy. If you look deep enough, you'll find someone in there promulgating the idea that something outside of us is going to save us. And if you look at Ben Fulford's language, which I do because I'm a linguist, you'll find that throughout his entire message for, for the last couple of years has been this idea of the external savior coming to save us, and he's sort of like the prophet of all of this. Now, what has occurred is a relatively common phenomenon, and that is that someone with an uncritical mind and also a certain amount of fame, and that's David Wilcock, uh, has um, uh, latched on to Ben's story. Now, we have to understand that, that David Wilcock is not ill-meaning. He's not mean-spirited. Is it, is uh, it fair to call him uncritical, though? He's done some really oh, yeah, yeah. You know, good no, no, stuff. No, no. And... It, is, it is quite fair to call him uncritical, and I'll explain why. Okay. Uh, in my in my opinion, it is fair to call David Wilcock uncritical because his approach seeks for success. Uh, he said he vetted Drake. Well, he sought to prove that Drake was uh, who he claimed. Therefore, he stopped as soon as he found the first piece of evidence that validated something in David Wilcock's mind that Drake was who he claimed. Now, if you any person in, in our reality that is based on having to go on out, for instance, and sail around to the planet or uh, build a road or craft a building knows you don't stop at the first point that proves your theory. In fact, your whole point in vetting someone or vetting a process is to disprove them, and I'll explain why. If you set out with the idea that you wish to disprove them, then if you fail, you succeed because they were legit. But if you succeed, you succeed because you've proven that they were a fraud or, you know, that your theory was fake or it was a, a invalid uh, way to approach reality. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is, in my opinion, the approach of a rational being in our reality. You set out with the idea of saying, I can't trust this. Now, David Wilcock always sets out, in my opinion, with the idea of validating, using, finding the evidence to validate his opinion when he sets out. So he did not attempt to vet Drake, in my opinion, nor did he ever vet uh, Fulford. He, all he did was find something that he could pin in his mind that said they were legitimate. There, there was another person in there. I listened back once again today to the, the recording, uh, the, the first one there he did with Drake, and, and he mentioned that there was another unnamed source as far as i understand it and that that th that confirmed that drake was the real thing and that drake kind of confirmed that he was the real thing this is the difficulty sure, sure. of course when we have unnamed sources uh, we don't know who it is we, we have no idea from our point of view which must be understandable for for david and everybody else who believes this as well that i mean we can't know what's true or not and and, and anyone can say that we have uh, you know x amount of people out there that are verifying the story but from our perspective uh, we only get what we hear, basically. There you go. Now, let's stop with that perspective right there. As rational beings, just the two of us, how shall we proceed? 
Shall we assume they're correct and, and, and uh, base our uh, movements through reality on that assumption? Or shall we assume the opposite? Because there's really very little uh, operating room in between. We, we find it very difficult to go along with the idea of, well, I'll not make a decision. Not many people can hold their mind in a state of, of uh, deliberate indecisiveness. So I find it is easier to say, well, if I can't prove it, you know, uh, like I say, my pappy was from Missouri, which is the show me state. Um, <laughs> and around here, it's like, well, you know, you show me and I'll, and I'll start to think about that maybe I might someday in the future grant that it's real. I mean, I'm a skeptic, I'll grant you that, but it makes going through life a lot easier because I'm rarely um, going to run up against that real huge wall of disappointment uh, that you get into with these cults of personality, which is basically what's developing here at the moment. We've got uh, Fulford claiming that this, uh, the Yakuza and the 10 million strong uh, dojos are going to force a particular kind of an outcome. That's, that's absolutely bullshit and bogus to begin with. There is not such a thing as a coordinated uh, global dojo society that in any way is central authority. So there you go. There's Fulford citing that one central authority, this Yakuza-controlled central authority, is going to take on another central authority to save us. He doesn't get into how the Yakuza are going are gonna to benefit. And in the end, you know what they're offering? This is the, the funny part of it. Uh, Fulford and uh, Wilcock, and we'll leave Drake out of it, but Fulford and Wilcock are offering, saying that we're going to be saved by what? Yet another central authority imposing a money system right. on the rest of us. Right, right, right. This is one of, one of the, the issues. I, I try to wrap my head around the story, and, 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 you know, in all honesty, I have a little bit of difficulty following it. I'm, I'm trying to get to the core, I guess, of what is being said to be able to make a decision about it. But, um, you know, from my perspective, it's, it's been somewhat difficult to do that in, in, in this case, because I'm, 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 I'm reaching somewhere out there to find the, the evidence for it. I mean, I, I, this program Correct. is all Correct. about listening to people, hearing about different perspectives, and there's many things we've talked about and will talk about in the future that is simply, you know, aspects that we cannot confirm. And we listen to it, we talk about it, we hear it out. And that's always been my approach to it, which I think is a great idea. You know, we just toss it out there, lay it out on the table, and people can make up their own minds about it. But in this case, also, I, I just, you know, from my own perspective, I've had a very difficult in, in, in pinning down some kind of evidence for it. Sure, this might be more things that are upcoming. There might be more things added to the story. So I don't want to jump, to, you know, prematurely on it as well and just say, this is bunk and bogus. But I guess I've been w wondering a little bit if, yeah, if some sorry to interrupt, but if some people then are going to be replaced at the top levels of the elite, um, who is doing this? Who are they going to be replaced <laughs> by? Who who or or maybe hey, the positions shouldn't question. be there at all? Go ahead, uh, Cliff. The even better question: Who are they going to report to when they replace the ones there now? Exactly. Yes. Okay. So because nothing would have changed. See, uh, meet the old boss. You know, meet the same new boss. Here. Same as the old boss. Yeah, there you go. So it's, it's just that situation all over again. And it's like, okay, Ben, that's fine. You've got this nice little uh, storyline going, and I won't go into the idea that uh, you can find discussed everywhere in uh, psychology that the mind is so infinitely complex it can never be used as a, as a device for examining self because we can never find the end of its twisty little trails, and it's always complex enough. Ben is not a stupid individual. He is not mean-spirited, in my opinion. He, I don't know what his issues are or, or where he's going with this or, or why he's being driven to pursue it. I think I kind of understand what happened to David Wilcock and how he got caught up in it. The Drake person is a, um, I think he's a tool uh, in a lot of the different meanings of that. And he's welcome to, to call me up and uh, dispute any of those if he wishes. And he's also welcome uh, if he wants to, you know, come on in and be a mean bastard and we can get physical about it if he thinks I'm insulting him. Uh, but I don't find his his uh, participation in this to be benign. Can I'm, I'm a linguist, and that's how I'm coming at it, is from the, the language that is expressed. Right. I could go through and detail all of this and explain it all out to you, but I'm just giving you an encapsulation on it uh, uh, so we can get a little further. The, the idea that they are expressing, though, at its core, repeatedly, no matter what evidence may be propped up or proffered, uh, in the future. Remember, their idea is that one corrupt system will be replaced with another corrupt system. And bear in mind that uh, the people that um, uh, Fulford is holding up as his examples of the shining uh, light of everything here are backed by the Yakuza, 
and the White Dragon Society, both of whom are criminal organizations. Now, I grant you, personally, as a, as a, a decrepit old bald bastard here in the Northwest, I've got no problem with the Yakuza. From my viewpoint, they're honorable individuals in this reality. Same thing with Tong members. They have their, they, they make no bones about their uh, formula and basis for reality. They are not attempting to in any way um, uh, trick you duplicitously the way the powers that be uh, are, who are criminals as well. So, so I can see a certain level of logic in it, the anti-hero approach, right? Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, the whole point of it all is one corrupt system replacing another. So even if Ben Fulford is accurate 100% and I'm absolutely inaccurate, I'm not going to buy into their system any more than I'm buying into the current one. Well, exactly. That's, I guess, also my point of, of, of issue here is um, we're, we're still not in a system then which is where we have freedom f for all. I, I guess what I'm, what I'm, what I'm getting at is I, I'm not doubting that obviously the, the elite, the power in charge, have, um, have their own criminal ways and, and that they, on their own level, kind of don't deserve to be uh, tossed out of the position uh, that they're in because it, it, it's a great disservice to all, all of us. But at the same time, um, if this is done by, by, by another similar force, what has really changed at that point? Um, what, what Correct. Is You'll find very many, very few people that lived through the process who would uh, say that Mao taking over from uh, Chiang Kai-shek was a great thing. Yeah, it's like arguing, well, it was bad enough under the Romanovs and therefore it was better under, you know, Lenin and later Stalin. And, and, and there's some people who would actually argue, you know, that that is the case <laughs> as well. Yeah, so, now there, there's... You know, my real bitch on all of this, the reason that I even spoke up, because I don't really care what kind of a story he's running. I'm not believing it. I'm not buying it. He's not getting any uh, energy from me, so it's not a big deal. But then we ran into a couple of issues here. Enough people that uh, seem to, to give a damn about what I say uh, were also listening to him that they asked me, well, what's, the, what's your opinion? And I had kept having to repeat it often enough that eventually I just wrote it up and put it on my site. And then there's the other issue is that Ben started straying over to an area that is much more pertinent. Now, bear in mind that Ben's savior myth, the external savior from the Yakuza and the um, uh, white dragon tongue, uh, are, is someday in the future, okay? Uh, there's never a date given. It's just some, someday. All of it's very vague as to when it's going to occur. It's all happening now, but yet it's not actually materializing. And it, we're, it's a big planet, so it'll take a long time for it to affect any of us. But at the same time, now he started to say things that like, oh, hey, the whole radiation thing from Fukushima is bogus. And that it's all because the uh, people at TEPCO and the Japanese ministers and everybody are all in the, in the um, pay of the Kabul that we want to replace, that they're out there spewing their, uh, even the minuscule amount of information that they're actually putting out. Mm. Okay, and so now he's entering into an area in which he's impacting my reality because I live here with my Geiger counter, my nuclear uh, disintegration meter that reads gamma, beta, and, and alpha, and I take readings at least twice a day. And I know the reality of the 800 bar and the 600 bar millistream uh, or, or millibar uh, jet streams and the uh, flow from uh, Japan over this way. And I know the reality of the radioactivity in the uh, fish. I've got a lot of friends of mine all up and down the coast here, all the way up north into Alaska, all the way down south into California, all coastal guys. And uh, we're seeing all kinds of strange things in the animals. The planet around us is changing. In that sense, I'm pretty much more of a... Um, a tribal guy. I live out in the woods here, right? And so uh, I'm very much attuned to my big veggies all around me. My giant 180-foot trees and I get along well, and, and things are not right in our planet. Mm -hmm. And Ben Fulford is saying just the opposite. He, in fact, if, if we believed what he was saying, he's saying, I'm a liar. So I had to say to him, flat out, man to man, you know, I'm as honorable a being as I could be, expressing myself as factually and as honorably as I could, without uh, saying any attribution to motive, I told him, I think you're lying. 
that I don't think you've ever had a Geiger counter in your hand because, uh, and if you did, how do you know what the background radiation was before the episode? Mm -hmm. I can tell you now that I bought my first Geiger counter in the year 2003, and I was so fascinated with it that I just left it on for months and went through battery after battery after battery and kept a log of everything I heard. So I knew my background radiation running continuously through 2003, 2004, and 2005 when I got involved with other items. And I know now that we're at levels that are hundreds of times that daily. So I know what's going on, and Ben Fulford is going to get people killed with that attitude. So I don't care if he gets himself killed. If he wants to live in denial where he's uh, at and what's going on with the radiation in Japan, that is his business. But he's also saying things about people that I am kin to through my dojo uh, connections. Because bear in mind, lots of the dojos I've been involved with do have Japanese connections. Mm -hmm. And the center of many of the martial arts world w was actually slightly to the southwest of the uh, Fukushima prefecture. And so there's a lot of people there that are in a world of hurt that have no money to get out. And we're dealing with that at a dojo level, actually trying to raise money for people to relocate uh, to us what amounts to... Um, honorable relics and that kind of thing, right, you know? Right, uh, And so so I'm living in that world, and it's not what, what Ben Fulford is saying about Japan, so he's giving a false impression or an ignorant one, and either way, he's got to be called on it. Right. We're definitely going to talk more about Fukushima, your ideas about this, and, and the severity of the situation, what really is happening and so forth. You have some interesting information about that. Uh, before we, we, we leave the subject, though, we did, there's some more things we want to discuss here, obviously. Um, now, I don't read or speak Japanese, and, and so I have no way of knowing if any of the information that Fulford is talking about is confirmed in any way from other sources in Japan, uh, you know, in, in Japanese. Have you come across any of such confirmation, correlating uh, details, information, such? Sure, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah actually, uh, he's a reasonably good Japanese linguist and his uh, grasp of the um, underlying Japanese as opposed to the various forms of kanji is, is in my mind, really good. Um, he does have factual supporting evidence, as does um, uh, Wilcock. They can point to things like, you know, I think it's up to like 800 plus now insiders have resigned their positions and are taking retirement at the ripe old age of, you know, 39, that kind of thing, right? All these suspicious retirements, sudden uh, vacation of very plush positions mm -hmm. and everything. Yeah. Yeah. As though, uh, now, there's, this is where we start getting into the details of their whole story, and this is where it starts getting really murky. And the issue is that they, they point to something and they say, aha, I see a stone in the road. I know that that stone moved there of its own volition and that it did so because it was afraid of what was going to occur over here on the side of the road. And, uh, you know, the mail cart's going to come and flick it out into the middle of the road. Okay, but basically they're saying the same thing about these 800 people. They're saying these 800 people all resigned because they're afraid of our ninja hordes and what's going down and the mass arrests coming. I would proffer that these 800 people are part of the elite, the elite are deliberately crashing the system, which we could go into the cycle of that. You know, every 20 years, they you you poor fellows in Europe should have wised up and seen our experience. 20 years after <laughs> yeah. we yeah. let in the uh, the Federal Reserve, they crashed it and they raped the country. Yeah. You know, so uh, it was a uh, bohica bend over. Here it comes again. Time for y'all. And so, you know, if we uh, let the central bankers get into the Middle East, 20 years from now, they'll rape the, uh, the Middle East and own all of their land. And as soon as the central bankers get into uh, China in a big way, 20 years later, there won't be a Chinese thing left there. It'll all be owned by somebody in Israel. <laughs> so, you know, it's, it's just one of those situations. Uh, the, the, the economic structure that is being proffered to us uh, especially by uh, on either side, by Ben or by the powers that be, it, are, are are all basically unsustainable. Now, what I find interesting about the whole problem with Ben Fulford and the other part of that uh, stew is the um, offers of money for everybody free. He's actually used terms like, uh, you know, money would rain down on Europe. Yes, and uh, it would solve it would solve the the Greek problem. And what they fail to understand is the basic underlying principle that we all operate on. And by the way, they have factual information. There are trillions of dollars of bonds, U.S. Federal Reserve bonds, supposedly secured by gold that were indeed legitimate. This is the same scam that hit Germany in uh, the 20s, though. 
okay, when their central bank crashed them. There were all these bonds that were suddenly appearing that were people were trying to crash or cash. Basically, the scam is this. this. The Federal Reserve Bank goes over to China at the time of a war that they engineered going on, World War II, and they say to all these rich Chinese, you know, you're going to be overrun by the Japanese here. Uh, we know for a fact you're going to lose all your property, and you're going to lose everything you've got, but we will loan you all of this money based against these, um, uh, the gold, and we will secure your uh, freedom in a Western area where you uh, won't have to worry about being shot as a warlord or, you know, a, a local uh, domineering bastard and uh, have all your goods taken away from you. And so they get all the gold from the, from the locals. They take it back over to the Federal Reserve, just as Ben Fulford and David Wilcock are suggesting, and they give them these bonds to be redeemed at a later date when the whole world has settled down. And, oh, by the way, when you give us your gold, we'll promise to give you back more gold because we're going to make a lot of money with this. And that itself is a scam. What everybody fails to recognize is, okay, let's stop and state that Ben Fulford at one point is actually saying that the Federal Reserve is an honorable institution, which is bullshit because Ben Fulford and David Wilcock are saying that the Federal Reserve stashed this gold. What they don't understand is that there are people that do assays of the uh, various minerals on the planet, and they can tell you down to basically the uh, tonnage level as to what percentage of the crust is, is this mineral at this point on our planet's developmental history. Now, I maintain, as an aside here, that the expansion of the planet changes those ratios dramatically, and we're in one of those periods right now. Mm -hmm. But nonetheless, nonetheless, the premise is that Ben Fulford and uh, David Wilcock think that all the gold that the Federal Reserve stole from all the Asians in World War II, especially the gold stolen out of the Philippines, is stashed somewhere in big caves. And they're willing to listen to anybody that says that they've been in those big caves and they've seen these caves because they want to believe it. The real fact of the matter is the Federal Reserve had that gold. It did issue those bonds. And what it did was it sold that gold as soon as it got its greedy little hands on it. And, in, and then later on it conned the somebody else that it sold that gold to out of that gold and sold it all over again. And it, that's part of how it works. And that's their whole <laughs> the whole banking scam. And if you'll note, there's a specific level of tonnage on the, of gold on the planet, and all it does is change hands. Now, they, so they do have accuracy. Getting back to the original idea of, of or do they have evidence? Well, yeah, there is evidence. There are these bonds. But then, to a certain extent, they're saying, uh, yeah, there's evidence that the feds are crooks, but we know they're honorable because they stashed that gold and it really exists somewhere. And that's where it all breaks down. Those bonds will never be honored just the way they were never honored in the 1920s. And you can actually find a lot of economists that will argue that it was the phony bond surfacing that triggered the hyperinflation and the crash of that economy, just as we are having right now. Very curious. I want to talk more about this, the idea that the system is being, cra you know, crash crashed story. Uh, intentionally, this is very interesting. There is a lot of talk about the, uh, the Pentagon, uh, you know, personnel, I guess, then within the military and potentially within other places, in, in other institutions, in, in, in positions of power that in some level seem to organize accord, according to the, you know, some of the argumentation points, uh, you know, raised by, by the people we're talking about here, uh, which also is very difficult to to, um, to verify, of course. Um, it, it, it's some... Okay, it, let me, let, let okay. me stop you right there. Yeah. Uh, there, is a comp there is a component to this, all right? And I'll be a stand-up guy, and I'll reveal a lot of stuff about myself that I would really rather not. But uh, to be fair, uh, you know, Fulford puts his face on, on YouTube, and I'm not willing to do that. So I'll put a bit of my history out there. Okay, Fulford and Wilcock are claiming that there's a lot of guys in the military that are going to run out and arrest banksters and politicians and throw them all into basically what amounts to some kind of a trial. And we'll have show trials just like we did with Stalin and this kind of thing. And it's going to all happen without a revolution. And it's going to all happen, and they're going to, and these individuals are going to tell Ben Fulford and David Wilcox specifically ahead of time, so that they can inform the rest of us. Warn them uh, and, and say, "Stay calm. It's all all right. It's exactly, okay." Exactly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's all bullshit too. Uh, my dad was a lifer in the military. Okay. My dad was inducted into the U.S. military prior to the Korean War through the draft process, as a result of being displaced from Missouri. Uh, where his father killed himself at age, when my dad was age six, my father blew his head off with a shotgun in front of the family because of what the banksters did to him. So there's a bit of personal history to tell you why I have this anger. Mm. Okay, now my dad uh, later on in life was 
displaced yet again because of banksterism and goes into the Korean War. Okay, from that point on, he's a lifer in the military because he's found his niche. Uh, he's a warrior. I'm a warrior. I mean, it's in our, it's in our um, birth patterns. Uh, he chose one route. I chose another. I wouldn't go into the military because I realize what the racket is. But let me take up to a sort of a, um, a modern day kind of a thing. My father uh, was good at his job. Uh, he got to the point where he was taking over um, uh, regiments. He was like a regimental commander, brigade commander. I mean, he was a lieutenant colonel. He got promoted, field uh, promotion from um, enlisted in Korea and then took over and saved all these people. They wrote him up, this kind of shit, right? So he, he gets promoted all through um, the ranks. We get a, uh, As a result of this, I got my ass dragged all over the planet and saw weird shit. Um, as a kid, and I grew up as a military brat. And so, you know, you kind of talk about disengaging yourself from the, the matrix around you. How can I say that, you know, I've ever disengaged myself when my entire life until I was about 16, I, I lived off of that, right, through mm. my dad's effort there. Mm. None, nonetheless, so he gets up to the point where in 1968, he got a big promotion, 67 actually, and he was promoted to Lyndon Johnson's staff as a, a lieutenant colonel on his way to full bird and heading out to general, right? And they put him in charge of something, and we can go into it if you want. We need not bother. But he was the military liaison between the White House and the um, operation that we came to call the uh, Chicago Democratic Convention hmm. and all those riots and all mm -hmm. of that business, yeah. right? Okay. Within days of the completion of, of that and debriefing, uh, he left. He quit. He um, volunteered to go back to Vietnam for the third time to get the hell away from there. And uh, life was never the same for any of us in our family. And so when, so I know the military. I lived through the Cuban Missile Crisis in a bunker um, because of what my dad did and, and who he was. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm the son of a lifer, uh, 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 a guy who chose that, that from the ranks, not one of the guys who came out of West Point, not any of that, that level of the officer corps, right? So I saw it from the rough side. Mm -hmm. Um, and Ben Fulford's lying. Those guys in the military are in a bind. They may indeed want to do this. Uh, there may be individuals that would want to do this, but bear in mind their minds are controlled to the level that you cannot understand unless you exhibit, uh, unless you live in it. And so they, every action they would want to take, there's 20 or 30 reasons already prepared in their mind for them not to take it. And these people are schooled in hierarchy in the reptilian mind to the point where they live in it constantly. Right. You, you're talking about the breaking down of an individual as they go into the military and then the rebuilding up of them again according to the standards that is set according to military protocol, meaning that there's a very, it's very difficult for military personnel to break outside of the, the perimeter set for them. Is, is that a good way of explaining correct, it? Or, correct. Yeah. Their minds are so heavily controlled that the parameters that exist within their minds bind them to a reality. They cannot see a reality beyond that. My father existed in a level because he was spanning two worlds, because he was promoted into high-level officer corps. He saw it, but he saw it from a guy who's, who was so, he was so traumatized by what he went through as a kid and the depression and stuff that it made an imprint on him that he never saw everything the way that they really wanted him to. And so I got an impression and was told a lot of things and, and lived with a lot of things that uh, other people, especially as kids, wouldn't have been privy to. And I know it, even in the, well, you know, the movie um, Seven Days in May, Mm -hmm. Okay, that was based on real action. That was a, a real, there was a time there in the early 60s when there was that potential that there was going to be that breakout in the military and they weren't going to buy into the racket that was Vietnam. And a lot of military people died um, as a result of their thinking. They were the first uh, victims of, you know, or, or persecuted for thought crimes. And they made a movie basically warning everybody else about it. Hmm. Interesting. Um, if I for a moment can go back to some of the points you raised earlier, you asked, uh, sure. you, you, you mentioned that Drake is uh, a, a tool, but, but basically, and uh, of who? Do you have any idea? About this? I don't want to speculate. You know, you can say Montauk, you can say MK Ultra. They're just labels. It's like um, I go out with my night vision goggles and I see these things flying around. Some things I think are human made, but who made them? Couldn't say. I can't see labels on those. I can't see any insignia, but I know they're there and I know they're out there doing things. So um, 
Drake's language betrays uh, the same level of control that you would see in a in a denser, grosser form in the uh, people that speak for the the political parties. He is speaking on an agenda, on talking points that have been delivered to him. I know this from the from the manner and the words chosen for his delivery of those talking points. Can, can you give me an example of that? Uh, I'd rather not at the moment. I may write it up, uh, but I'd rather not because it, it might betray something I'd rather not. Okay, let, let's okay. follow. If you, if you wanted yeah. to go and listen to him, though, mm. and I, or read a transcript, that's even better. Read the transcript, and and every time you feel an internal discontinuity, and as a native English speaker, I feel it. I don't know if you would, uh, but any time you feel an, an, an internal discontinuity in the way the language is being presented, then you know he's stepping outside of his, his real personality, and there's many of them within the first, oh, 10 minutes. Well, I, I felt this throughout the, the whole thing, in a way, because, I, again, I just go back to that initial point. I mean, I've been doing this radio show for a while. I listened to quite a bit of information pertaining and, and surrounding these kinds of topics, and I just, again, had a very difficult time of actually pinning down what what is being said here. I mean, can we get to the, the point kind of thing? And it could be me. I'm, I might be impatient. I might maybe not be, uh, you know, 100% fair then or something. But that's just my initial feeling of what I got got from it, that I, I, tr I tried to uh, just wrap my head around it, I guess. And uh, But it was very elusive and difficult. But again, as I said before, I want to be fair about this. And it, there might be more stuff coming up about this. And I'm definitely willing to 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 listen to it my mind is opened but not to the point that my brain falls out that i've said before so you know i'm I'm critical about what i hear i just don't adopt it into my belief system and immediately you know run with it if you know what i mean so sure sure and and that actually the skeptic um have you ever read uh what's her name um pamela meyer's book on lie spotting no i do not recognize that no Oh, she's really good. If you ever get a chance to interview her, too, she's uh, tremendous. Uh, uh, she gives you all kinds of clues to to guard yourself against uh, deception and tells you why and, you know, why reality is so filled with deception and why it's such a bitch and why we deceive ourselves constantly and this sort of thing. So having read her material a long time back, having been involved with people that were con artists and seen how, to, how it all works and this kind of thing, you get to the point where you, you realize certain personality types are easy marks. This is why they're identified as, you know, useful idiots in the military or the intelligence realm, right? And so David Wilcock, he's been pegged. They can feed him virtually anything, and if they feed him quasi-supporting evidence, he'll come to the appropriate conclusion that he thinks he, he actually concluded. <laughs> That's the beauty of it, see, is that, that they show you a structure, and they never call it a barn, and they show you the paint and the wood and all of this, and they want you to come to the conclusion that it's a barn, and, and they let you come to the, that conclusion, and that's exactly what has happened here. And so these people have made certain conclusions that they then have such a, an intense emotional conviction of that they can sell it, whereas if they were operatives and were presented with this to go on out and sell it, now they couldn't make us happen. It could, couldn't happen. In fact, there's another diametrically opposed uh, version of this that is collapsing right now, and that's this whole Thrive movement, okay? Because mm -hmm. the whole Thrive movement uh, is a is a propelled, say all the right things uh, movement, in my opinion. Not not you know, I'm just saying this my opinion from looking at the language. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. They're saying all the right words, and yet there's absolutely no emotional conviction in it at all, and it's crashing, and it's not taking any kind of weight because the people behind it are they don't buy it they don't believe it they're not able to sell it um you know it's um uh, uh a collective work it is not um a point of individual passion and you need that individual passion anymore to be able to sell things these days because people don't buy the idea of collective works anymore uh, because of the nature of the change of individuals ever since the internet came on and that's a whole nother discussion Okay, let, let's follow along in your line of thinking and, and, and discuss two other points here then. What would be, one of them is what would be the point of this? And, and this kind of dovetails with another question that I have that goes into um, how far up this goes in the ranks. I know we kind of touched upon that before and, and, and you're somewhat reluctant or it's difficult to say, but do you think that they, uh, you know, the elite or whoever is behind this then, whoever provided, let's let's say someone like Drake with, with this kind of, level of information or are they worried? no drake is a guy who drake is a guy who would work for my dad 
he would have been a guy that would have been working for my dad, no question. So, so somebody like my dad, a lieutenant colonel, uh, maybe a full bird, uh, told Drake what to say. All right. Okay. Okay. It's on that level, as far as we know. Mm-hmm. But that that order could have been given from further up as well that we don't know. Correct. Um, correct. But, and where the chain goes. That's why I don't answer why questions. I can't say <laughs> what their agenda is. Yeah. None of it makes sense. Okay. Let me ask you this: Why are they pumping out hundreds and hundreds and trillions of pounds of aluminum in the air? So in the chemtrails, there's many different explanations, but there's no real clear understanding of why. We know they're doing it. It's almost undeniable anymore by anyone uh, other than the willfully blind. And mm-hmm. it's actually gotten to the point now where our biosphere is dying. We have a local tree around here called the Madrona that is dying as a result of aluminum poisoning on moss. The Madrona trees are just croaking right and left. They're just not going to survive. It has nothing to do with the freezing of the past years. It has nothing to do with the weather. They're aluminum sensitive and they're all dying. The whole species is disappearing. It won't be long before our species is gone. We're aluminum sensitive too. So why is it occurring? I don't answer why questions because of the speculation involved. Um, and speculation, like we see with Will, uh, Wilcox and, and, and uh, Fulford, leads us into areas that are not productive. Of course, and it... But it does imply something. It 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 probably means something. But the fact is that we can sit here and speculate and say all day what that means, and even come up with scenarios that uh, never was on the uh, you know on the agenda to begin with. But um, correct. And that's just, why I annoy the crap out of my wife and uh, and uh, people like George Ure is because I don't like to think that way. Uh, what I would rather think is okay. I see them doing this. I see them polluting my environment with aluminum. How am I going to respond? rather than waste my time figuring out what they're doing it for. Mm-hmm. I know there's also other things up there. More gallons came down by way of the chemtrails. There's other issues going on involved, and it's high, com, highly complex. And I could, if I wanted, spend a lot of time thinking about it, but we don't have that time. We now have to start thinking in terms, in my opinion, in terms of how am I going to respond. All right, m- more on that in a little bit. Uh, what I'm getting to here is that, or what I want to ask you again is, do you think that it means that whoever gives the order here are in some level afraid. Uh, I don't know if that's the correct word of oh, the, yeah, no, of no, grassroots movements uh, that they do want to try to destabilize this. I mean, inherently, I'm more suspicious, Cliff, and this is what I'm getting to, that we have a number of things unfolding throughout the last couple of years here. Occupy movement, WikiLeaks, Anonymous, that are like, whoa, 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 wait a minute. These are big organizations in a way that are, are, are vastly changing the, the geopolitical landscape and, and people's minds out there. And so I st- take a step back and, and, uh, and just look at this and say, wait a minute now, who's no, behind this? No. Why? Okay, okay right. go, go that's ahead. What I would say is, that's what I would say as well. Okay, the who's behind it and why. Um, uh, but actually, let's, let's dispute first off. Let's not make our – I'm very self-critical, okay? I, I can barely stand myself as a human, let alone anybody else. That's why I'm a hermit <laughs> of the woods. And that's quite true. That's quite true. I'm extremely self-critical, and that's why I'm very annoyed when I run across people like um, Wilcock and Fulford who are, who are very talented – and could be great beings, in my opinion, but they're not self-critical, and so they don't analyze themselves and their own motivation and stuff, mm. but that's another oh, aside. Okay. okay. Mm. So, so the, the, the nature of what we're doing, though, is you're, you're making certain statements that are not true. WikiLeaks hasn't changed the uh, nature of our reality. Okay, it came off. It has a big splash. It was a nice um, uh, show for a while. There's all kinds of drama involved. What's the net result? Uh, ain't shit. We haven't heard anything that changed anything. None of it went to any level of fundamental change. It was all at the same kind of fake change that the minions and Obama and these kind of people keep pumping out. And that's so my point. Yeah. That is my point, oh, okay. that it's a okay. fake truth. It's a fake kind of re- revelation coming to us. But go ahead, uh, Cliff. Oh, okay, I was just going to confirm that. You yeah. know? And then when I go back and I finally say, okay, what, what's going on here? Because I expected more. Bear in mind, I had these guys pegged. I knew that we were going to enter into a huge period of release language, and I got all kinds of shit from the world for saying so months in advance. And that release language jumped me. It started three days earlier with the launch of that um, uh, ICBM off the coast of California, and then we hit that 63-day period where WikiLeaks came out, and we had all the brouhaha. And I expected that it was real. And then I discovered, oh, man, I'd been sold a bill of goods in a sense because as a person, I read the data, saw the forecast, but I actually thought there was something underlying it as opposed to just the big uh, propaganda brouhaha to keep us all distracted. Mm. Make sense? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay, so yep. I, was my, I was my own victim. So I'm saying let's not be our own victim here. And so I'm agreeing with you. Both of these things, I, the Occupy movement and this kind of thing, 
uh, not the solution. They're distractions. WikiLeaks is a distraction. If WikiLeaks comes on out and tells me that they murdered Pope so-and-so and they did this uh, for this reason and that the space alien agenda has been involved in the Catholic Church since back when and every single one of these military patches that we see in the NASA things that have green eyes go directly to the space aliens that are controlling the uh, intelligence uh, uh, agencies out of the Navy, Navy's largest intelligence base, which is in Kansas, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, then I would say, okay, WikiLeaks is starting to tell us something that is useful, that all is right. meaningful. <laughs> but all this drama about Hillary and the, and the other elites and getting us focused back on the celebrities and stuff, fuck <laughs> it. I don't care about them, you know? <laughs> they can go rot in hell. Ratzinger I don't care about as a person. Um, he's an evil bastard, and I have a personal history that goes back to the Catholic Church in Germany that we can go into some other time if you want. But the, as an individual, he's not worth killing. You know, he's as much a stooge as the uh, as the as the guy who wants to be king of the planet. Uh, what's his name? Not Michael. Uh, David Roth Rothschild. Mm -hmm. Yeah. These people have their strings pulled. They have. I used to uh, when I was a. Um, uh, still working software in the 90s there, and I was all wrapped up in my projects and stuff. I got really irritated because it looked like uh, the bastards in uh, the political realm. This was when I was didn't really grasp what was going on, bear in mind, okay? I was still mm -hmm. fascinated by uh, my mind's ability to invent things and was just pursuing that. And so I was kept stumbling across this stuff. And for a while, I was really pissed at George Bush and all these guys, right? And because they were taken and they were going to kill my people, my friends, the people I grew up with in the military, um, you know, my cousins. Uh, we lost more men in my family in Vietnam than, uh, I mean, I'm one of the very few that are left. I'm, I'm a survivor in that sense. But I'm the remnant of the DNA line because so many of us got killed off. And, and so I have this personal thing about these individuals being thrown into harm's way when they are just, just brilliant you know, creative people that can go on out and we could fix the damn planet if we weren't focused on killing uh, somebody on the other part of it. And so I got really irritated at George Bush. But George Bush, I, I actually went to the trouble of investigating it. And this poor twisted being, uh, you know, was shoved around and, and maligned and, and um, maimed uh, by the satanic uh, bastards that are his parents. And, you right. know... Right. So, so we are a gigantic uh, planet. Uh, we are a dysfunctional family, and we need to face this at a personal level. So, my heroes now are like my personal hero is like uh, Michael Tassarian because he's grasped at least the central core of this. Now, I can't let go, and I'm a failed individual in many in many levels, so I'll never be as good as he is. But he grasped the only thing you can really hold is your consciousness. The only thing you can do to save the planet is to mold your consciousness on a daily basis continuously. Right. David, right. I, David Icke grasps this as well. And there are a few others out there, you know. Then there's people like myself that are too into their warrior nature. We're just born that way. My cells just want to react, you know. So there's quite a few people I want to pound into a little... Uh, bloody pulp. I can't help it, you know, and I feel bad for myself and I apologize. It's not a good thing. You know, it's not a thing for an Aikidoist, but um, <laughs> I've, got to, I've got to be honest. I've got to take the Bruce Lee route and say, you know, the hardest thing on the planet is to be fucking honest with yourself. The second hardest thing is to express yourself honestly. And so uh, I've got to say I've got that in me. And so I, I you know, I live out in the woods and I, I, deal with that because I am not someone that you would put into a situation. And so, you know, I will do things. I will withdraw when I know that my um, contentiousness is not going to aid it. And thus, when the, uh, I don't con control them or involve myself with the WebBot forum or the WebBot radio guys, those things sprung up on their own. They interviewed the Thrive people. They asked me to participate. I went so far as to provide a couple of questions. But I did not participate because I know that I would not have let it go, that I would have taken that uh, uh, Foster Grant fellow there and I would have um, – uh, or Foster fellow there and I would have just gnawed on him and pulled on him and, and tugged on him and it would have been contentious and it would not have aided anyone. And I don't know that it would have even aided me in getting closer to the truth. Mm, yeah. And it would have irritated everything, right? But, but there's – again, it's like the uh, Wilcox and Fulford thing. There's a vagueness, there's a morass, a softness um, that you can't come to grips with, that you just keep disappearing into. It keeps retreating ahead of you when you get involved in all this Thrive crap. And so I know it's not, let's put quotes around it, real. And, and, and what is 
you know, evidence to some will not be that to others. There's a, I mean, we're all different. We have difference yeah. of opinions. We're all, uh, we have a different approach to life, a different philosophy. This is just the nature of how, how things are. I don't ever think we can sit down and like agree, you know, that, yep, this is the way it is or should be done or should be handled. Uh, this is simply that would about, scare me if it yeah, did. That exactly. Would scare me. I know. Because then I know we would be under the we'd be absolute mind control Borg uh, slaves under a central authority. What what I really like is contention, uh, aggravation, release language, uh, you know, all kinds of crap happening all the time everywhere, such that nobody really has a handle on it. So uh, I know that you know the political parties, uh, they're they're criminal gangs being run by a guy at the top that says you all do this, you know. <laughs> And the media, uh, let's call them what they are. They're, they're propaganda whores, you know? That's right. Uh, you know, and boy, they get rewarded really well. It's like, okay, Wolf, you know, uh, you <laughs> and the guys over at uh, Fox News and stuff, enjoy yourselves. Uh, you know, I don't want to be dark and, and foreboding and stuff, but uh, you're not real individuals, and you will discover this when you die. And it's just not a good thing. And there's, you know, you have all of these, let's, you know, if you want to get really um, bizarre about it, you have all these religions out there and spirituality um, approaches that say, you know, do this, do that, and do this and everything. What's their whole point? Well, they're all talking about this point of transition that we all call death. Well, um, why do you think the Catholic Church went to such a great trouble over centuries to destroy the indigenous populations? They didn't really care about the indigenous populations. They wanted them as slaves. They wanted to preserve them. But what they had to destroy was the knowledge yes. and the processes that were in, in, involved in the shamanic uh, traditions. Yep. And, and from my viewpoint, from a personal viewpoint, I'm an, like an internet shaman, okay? I've gone that route. I've gone the psychedelic route. I've gone the meditation route. I've seen that shit. And, and you know, you can believe me or not, it does not matter. I can say the words and just grin, uh, you know, and you can see, see my uh, smiling face here as I say them to you that, you know, I've seen the other side. I've seen the bardo. From this perspective, I have seen the bardo, and you bastards are not going to like what you're going to find there when you suddenly look around and see that huge mass of karma you're dragging, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and people have come back. I'll tell you, people have come back from the dead and talked to me in that position when they're in those 49 days of the bardo, and they've told me about it. And there's no words involved, and you can't get into it in, in a word way. But um, again... Uh, fear goes away if you if you're uh, an honorable being here. So in many regards, the yakuza that uh, that Ben Fulford holds up, those individuals that are murderers and killers and so forth that are working out their own twisted karma, they will have far less of uh, uh, time in the 49 days in the Bardo than uh, Wolf Blitzer and Hannity and George Bush and these other bastards. <laughs> I, I feel for them. It's uh, it's an individual journey, a path that the you know the self must. Uh, walk and discover and 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 uh anything is possible in the beyond i think in that way and and i think what this what this will be or mean to different people will be will be different depending on how we've lived our lives and how what we try to do and and how we try to better ourselves or or not you know to go against the grain as it were but uh, let me just go back a little bit more here we we um we're going over a little bit on the hour and that's fine we need to talk about some more things here before we uh end up the you know finish up on the first segment here but um Let's go back to the resignations uh, thing. That people are laid off, people are fired, and such. Murdoch's empire is uh, partially taken down. Strauss Kahn is hanged out to dry. Lehman Brothers goes down. Is this consolidation of power? Do you think that we're seeing in the world right now? Uh, there are certain trends there. That are, you're correct. There's a certain uh, coagulation to a thick syrupy mass as you move into the depression. That occurred in the 30s, and it occurred in 1890. It occurred in 1861. Uh, uh, so yeah, that does does happen. Uh, however, what we're also seeing here is a uh, the Fulford and Wilcock pointing to an aggregation and saying that all of this aggregation occurred for a single point of uh, a view that they have. So, for instance, there were a lot of these resignations, the 800 and something, that occurred last year, uh, early last year, and some that occurred for personal reasons, some that occurred for reasons being uh, people being arrested. So a lot of them are are not of a central uh, motivation. However, there are enough central motivation um, uh, resignations and other strange things going on with the elite, some of which have been uh, tagged by uh, Wilcock and Fulford for their evidence that I grant you there's a wave of change going on out there that they have, have uh, at least had the perception uh, 
to see. Make sense? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. They're, they're attributing a certain uh, level of um, uh, action and motivation to it that I would not, but they're seeing it as I do. Right. Uh, I, I think I understand what, what you're saying. Are we, uh, are we just being, there's this idea of, of you, you know, I heard uh, Wilcock mention that there is a lot of uh, people out there just spreading fear. And, and I guess from his point of view, maybe he's trying to inject some level of uh, positivity as well I- into all of this. I mean, are, are we just being pessimistic for not believing what we're being uh, told here? What, what's your take on that? I don't know. I don't know. I I don't live in that world. I live in a world with um, uh, what we could say is righteous or real suffering. You know, where beings die, where they get sick, where they spend ten years dying. Uh, so I live in a world of suffering. So the idea that you know. Uh, the birds are going to sing and the sun's going to come out in perpetuity. The chemtrails are going to stop and free pie for everyone. No, I don't buy it. Anybody's telling me that has got something to sell. My dad had this saying once. Let me see if I can recall it. Uh, he said, life is shit. Anybody telling you different is trying to sell you something. <laughs> and, he's, and he's correct. Now, admittedly, that was after his you know, third tour in Nam, and he'd seen some stuff he'd rather not. But, but he's quite correct at that. There is deserved suffering. Right? I get a saw blade through my leg, I must suffer the consequence of that act. Uh, there is no instant cure for that. Uh, you, you've just got to go through it. So I don't live with that kind of mind, and I cannot reconcile my sense, the self to that view. And I, and I actually won't have it, just as I won't have the, uh, in my, my presence, I won't have the crap from the TV. You know, it's mm-hmm. bullshit. It's as yeah. much a lie as the Fulford shit. Why should I stand here and listen to that when I know it to be untrue? People want to believe also very bad. We're, 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 not, we're not right, in bad right. need of something positive news right now. So I think that's also a tendency maybe why people are, I mean, I'm not saying that everybody's uh, jumping on this or even if they are that they're, you know, 100% wrong. That's not what this is about either. But um, th- there is a need for some positive news in all this because it's it's quite depressing out there at the moment. Uh, right? Oh, but, it, depressing as hell. It's, it's very interesting, uh, you know, listening to you about this, uh, Cliff, uh, getting a different take on this on this story. And uh, and as well, on top of it, as we know, extraordinary claims demand extraordinary evidence. And that's all we're kind of, you know, talking about here in a way we, we were trying to to understand what is being said and, and, and uh, how we can uh, believe what is being said and, and also why we shouldn't to some extent until more well, things it, become available. Right, exactly. It goes back to that same issues that they used to have in the old Cold War crap. And do you remember Reagan saying the trust but verify? Right, yep, yep. Okay, well, there's a hidden side to that that you never hear s- stated. If you can't verify, you can't trust. That's right. Okay, so I can't verify uh, any of the stuff that uh, Fulford is saying about, or Wilcock, or any of these people are saying about unnamed sources. So I can't trust any of them. But we can believe. Sor- right, correct. Now, and also, um, you know, let's, um, I, I don't really need to get into that level of it, but but it's really true that we do need positive news, that we are in a uh, huge level of, of uh, very depressing facts coming to light simply because of the uh, huge ama- amount of the Internet and the, the fact that you have a disparate level of awakening people, a growing number of awakening people that will find uh, different parts of it of the awakening process to be intriguing to them so they'll root out different things that the rest of us haven't seen and they'll bring it to our attention and the whole thing seems just huge and giant and overwhelming and it's all quite true and it is huge and giant and overwhelming and I have found very little um, positive coming out in the way of the individual facts but I have discovered that to a certain extent you get to the stage where you realize that uh, you're faced with your own duality. Again, we go back to like the Michael Tessarian, your own grasp of your own consciousness. This is the only thing you can control is your attitude, your response. And even that, you have to acknowledge the biology controls you, the, the sun controls you, the moon controls you. All of these things exert influence on your consciousness. If you're not cognizant of that, you are not cognizant. So if you're making decisions on a particular day and you're not aware that there's a full moon that day, you are not an aware individual making aware competent decisions. And so if you get to that point, then you realize, hmm, maybe, just maybe, there's a possibility that the universe is indeed unfolding as it should. And that that my task is to reconcile myself to the to a level of acceptance 
as opposed to flogging mm -hmm. it to death. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. And this is a very, very, again, going back to the Bruce Lee thing, because here you come back to honesty at a level that is internal. And this, I would maintain that there, you could have an honest con man. You could have a guy who lies to the world every single uh, syllable he says, but is inherently honest to himself because he doesn't lie to himself, and that that, that would actually be an appropriate response to a, to a planet filled with deception. Hmm. You like, know, yeah. that, would be, that wouldn't be an enlightened individual because the enlightened individual would not fear being honest in the face of all the deception. But we must come to a, a way of... of as you say, uh, reconciling or, or, or discriminating to the, uh, to the oppressive mass that is coming out now and will continue to come out. Believe mm -hmm. me, we have mm -hmm. not even scratched the surface. Mm -hmm. I know stuff that makes me weep. I'm a 58-year-old guy, and I'm pretty tough, right? And I've been turned into an emotional basket case by the stuff that's coming out about what the Catholic Anglican churches and their master, the crown, that is to say the queen and her husband, have done to the indigenous population just north of me here in British Columbia. And I won't go into the details there, but they closed down some orphanages up there. And the Catholic Church did everybody a huge favor before they closed down the orphanage. They had 20 feet of soil hauled in to cover up the entire grounds of the orphanage, 20 feet mm -hmm. uh, thicker. Right. They had layers of cement poured into the, to the basements of those buildings. And they had real good reason to do that. This kind of stuff, this level of knowledge, um, uh, cannot, in my opinion, you're not all that human if you're not affected by it. And I don't know that I want to know you if you're not affected <laughs> by it. Um, so, so we are in an oppressive state, but there is something we can take out of this. And that is that I have not willingly participated in any of this as an individual. I may have willingly, as an individual, participated in the structure that allows such things to exist and continue. But from the point of my discovery of that, I no longer participate. And so I can be honest and I can have acceptance. I can acknowledge my depression. I can get a certain amount of resolve out of it. And I can seek for what happiness has uh, allowed me in this universe. But I, as an individual, have never assumed, uh, probably because of the tortured nature of my own childhood, uh, that happiness was offered to everyone or, or was uh, that everybody deserved it. Uh, so, or not deserved it, but, you know, that the planet was supposed to deliver it. Makes sense? Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot yeah. of people that are yeah. sold that. You know, 1950s around here, in the 60s in the United States. I didn't live here in the United States then, so I wasn't um, influenced by the TV, but I saw that stuff later as reruns, and it's like, wait a second. They're telling you here that, you know, this whole 1950s uh, structured cube world is uh, basically the same crap that's in the um, uh, Catholic interpretation of the Bible. And by the way, if anybody really wants to hear what the Bible actually has to say, there's this marvelous guy out there, um, uh, Mario uh, Biglino, uh, who was paid by the Vatican to translate the, the Bible from the actual source material. And he translated 23 books of it. And then one day he found out what they were doing with his translation and said, enough, he's not participating, and they canned him. Uh, but mm -hmm. talk about a linguist. This guy is just beautiful to listen to, even if you don't understand a word of Italian, just the passion in his voice. Uh, but he's out on YouTube. And you get a real understanding of what's been going on, um, uh, you know, of what's, what's happening here. And mm -hmm. uh, we need something. I grant you that. I'm not the person to ask for that because my role on this planet is not that. I'm more on the dark side. It's it's very difficult when we're being um, when we end up in these different isms that that promise us a certain set of uh, experiences as we come to this planet. I guess I could say uh, that everybody deserves this or that. Uh, it's the same thing with the with socialism that they offer you some kind of egalitarian paradise. It, it it is not equal in that way, and 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 there's nothing as far as I know that says that life is supposed to be just. It, it doesn't mean that humanity shouldn't strive for it and be, be fair and all that, but uh, as we come here, uh, there's no instruction about that as far as I'm concerned anyway. But w what about the argument then that thoughts, intention, and, and what we choose to focus on creates reality? If, if we only focus on negative aspects, this is what is going to manifest itself in our lives. We're going to end up in downward spinning spiral Spirals because of it. Yeah. So on. Okay, well, that's true at a very facile surface level. 
Okay, that's true at the positive thinking produces positive results, law of attraction level, okay? And I can argue on a on a energy level why that ca happens, what happens when the Karmans get that intention going on out, and why that has an immediate and facile surface shallow result and why it fades. And and none of those are really pertinent because anybody who cares to try the experiment cannot keep it up. They can't have the law of attraction continue without it resorting. Well, basically, you're talking about the same thing that the powers that be do, but they really know what's going on. You want to have that law of attraction stuff work? You want to have it continue and supplant or and, uh, provide, have universe provide you with uh, glory, riches, wealth, and everything you want? Then you've got to crawl into a dark hole in the middle of the night on a particular spot on the planet. Uh, with moss and, and uh, um, darkness around you, a barely flickering candle, and you've got to take out a knife and you've got to cut a, uh, an infant open and consume part of that being. And you've got to do it at a particular time under a particular ritual situation. And most of the people that do that, we call the elite. And they can work it because it's that level of magic. So intent, I could also argue that, okay, that's bullshit on one level because you can't tell me what your next thought is going to be. You can't tell me when you're going to have an aha moment. You're gonna, not going to be able to tell me when you're going to be able to have a burst of creativity. Therefore, you're not in control of your own thoughts. And it could be argued that you're merely a standing wave receiver with specific frequencies and tunings so that you will receive specific kinds of thoughts. And so I had the idea to form the series of software programs that led to the creation that George uh, Ure called the web bots. Um, uh, and you didn't because I'm tuned that way and you're not. You had the idea to be a really cool red ice guy because you got that tuning. And the guy four desks over from you who may have had close to it is working for you. So we have that idea that the decision to move your arm comes from somewhere else. We actually don't have any free will. This no, is just we're no. just based on the impulses. Go ahead. Uh, it's please. much more complex than that. Much more complex than that. You have to understand that you don't control where your your mind does not at the level of consciousness as far as your little C consciousness in your body is concerned. It doesn't control where the skin ends and the atoms of air begin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, okay, so you're not in control of your body. You have no no absolute control over that. The most you can do is to these crude um, levels of control of feeding it or not feeding it, breathing or not breathing. And even then I can argue you can't not breathe. But you could not eat yourself to death, okay? So you'd have that level of control. But you couldn't say, uh, when I get up from this chair, I'm going to take parts of the chair with me. But there is no distinguishable difference between the atoms of your butt and the atoms of your clothing and the atoms of your chair. And so if you really were in control of that, you'd constantly be having to filter out the stuff that would in intrude on you. Now, as a shamanic energy being here, I know it's much more complex than that. And I know, for instance, that uh, eczema is a condition of disturbance within the energy body that can be corrected, but arthritis is in fact, at least the kind that I have, non-rheumatoid, but rather what they call inflammatory arthritis, is an invasion from an energy parasite. And uh, you can control some aspects of that invasion of the energy parasite, but killing it is a bitch to get rid of it 100%. I've actually been able to do things like reduce visible nodules and distortions in my joints caused by this energy parasite and isolate it to a couple of, of, of joints, but I've not been able to kill it. But I was able to cure 100% eczema that had existed for 20 years once I, I caught on to how all this stuff works. Further, I was even able to describe it in such a way that a woman told her five-year-old uh, daughter, I believe, how to do it, and she was able to cure her own eczema just because she was so innocent she didn't know better, and so she meditated on it and figured it out and cured it. Um, so the world is not as we are told. The idea that you can decide I'm going to have nothing but positive, harmonious thoughts is bogus. I would defy that. And in fact, such a state uh, of continuous bliss is not life as I would describe it. Life requires necessary suffering, ups and downs, continuous uh, you know, disharmony, if you will, and struggle. And that's the point of it. Now, you can get into the Buddhist level where they say, well, you know, there's the universal consciousness, the uh, grand universal consciousness, and all the shades of consciousness down to the thick syrupy mass that is the condensate that uh, uh, is your body. Because your body is also conscious, independent of you. It will keep breathing even if your consciousness is separated from the body under certain circumstances. 
Um, so drugs only separate your consciousness so far, but I know people that can meditate so much that they can drift away so far that they won't breathe without a minder. And so you've got to get them back to their to the level of their body. So they have really good consciousness, much, much greater than the anesthesiologist could deliver. So I'm sorry, I just don't buy it. You know? All uh, right. Yeah, I can, I yeah. can, I can, I could do that. I actually have faced the choices, you know, shall mm -hmm. I take this path or shall I take the other? And I chose to go to the dark route because of certain things, but I could have done the intention route. I could have done the intentional sacrifice and gone the, um, uh, media propaganda whore route. And I've had that offered to me and had it, presented and it's um it wasn't attractive to me so you know it was a waste of time for me because of where i am and the, and the, mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. kind of thing mm -hmm. but because that was exposed to me and i saw it i know how that works and um it's dangerous and people need to be advised of that it has blowback all right interesting really good and now i want to get into more detail about fukushima in the in the second hour but uh, i know that there's something you want to kind of detail here um, before we wrap things up with the first hour. So let's do that right now then, Cliff. Sure, sure, real quick, and I, and I really appreciate your hanging on for this. Uh, but because of, we can go into all the reasons I've had troubles with the data and so on uh, uh, later on, but I have two points of interest about Fukushima. Uh, and let's just say Fukushima and or, or also other nuclear events. And I have two particular dates, and they're July 10th and December 14th. The linguistics that I have for July 10th indicate that they're going to have a big shock, an energetic response, a giant noise on July 10th relative to the nuclear situation. So my mind at this stage is pegging that to Fukushima. Uh, there are some indications that Fukushima is involved as well, but I don't have a surety just yet because I'm early in the process. I also, though, do have a temporal echo for whatever occurs on July 10th will either reoccur be abated or be controlled uh, on or by uh, very close to December 14th. The word that's associated with uh, the December 14th occurrence is resolution. Uh, oh. Not in a good way, though. Mm -hmm. hmm. And that's the basically because I've been asked, was there anything in the data? I thought I would get it out in this portion of the, of the interview, and I thank right. you very much for that. Absolutely. Well, we're going to talk more about it, obviously. Uh, the website is half past human. Dot com. Where do people go to find out more about the uh, the analysis that, that you guys are doing there? Uh, if you go to the upper uh, right-hand corner, you can see about our processes and practices. I've got a column of um, uh, various rants and raves and other sorts of articles, uh, some of which you can pick and choose, some of which have good stuff in them, and others I'm just blown off steam. Um, but uh, And then we have our reports, and if you're desperately poor and you're a regular human and you can't re re afford it, you can always ask us for a, a report and we'll send it to you for free. But, but please, everybody needs to bear in mind, we've just discovered how egregiously we've been ripped off by these giant corporations that we're literally were circulating tens of thousands of copies of our reports. Uh, I mean, we, I, I won't go into that as well, but uh, so... I'm giving them away for free, but um, you know, if you could not rip us off, it would help everybody's karma. Absolutely. The, go to the uh, the process page that uh, Cliff uh, mentioned there up in the top right corner and scroll down. You can get the latest um, Alta report uh, right there and read more about all these things, of course. And we're going to talk a little bit about more about these uh, aspects in the second hour and what 